family members so that you are always connected. All right. Now, we want to talk matters employment vis-a-vis -vis cost of living. And right now, I'm joined by Arnold Chiang, who is the general manager of Workforce Africa. Welcome to business today, Arnold. Uh, quite an interesting December. Yes. I mean, this is the first Monday for December, and a lot of people, you know, uh, they are trying to plan themselves where they'll be. Uh, and that comes at a cost, the cost implication. Now, just looking at the year, first of all, as somebody who is observant, how, how, how has the economy been working for you from a workforce perspective? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, basically, as we all know, the year has been quite uh, rough, not only on businesses, but also on individuals. As we also know that uh, the rising high cost of living, it means there's a high cost of running a business and a high operational cost. So definitely, you have to try and manage both in a way that uh, still you're able to run as an operation, but also still able to, to support your people who run the business. All right. Yeah. Uh, this, this year, because we've seen lots of redundancies, sure. uh, companies cutting down from workforce perspective, uh, has there been those structural changes? From workforce perspective as an organization, uh, we haven't had that uh, be the issues that affect our redundancies. However, we've, we've seen instances where multinationals, other organizations are restructuring in a way for them to be able to continue to do business, but while also still trying to provide for their for their for their staff. Okay. Yeah. Quite a balance right there. Yeah, sure. Now, Arnold. Yes. This issue about wages, because we rarely discuss about wages other than Labor Day. I know. That's <laughs> when we wait. Like, hey, let's wait. They'll announce minimum wage, and minimum wage is not even part of our day-to-day -day conversation. True. Apparently, uh, should it be something that? Uh, we should pay attention to and why? Definitely, uh, minimum wage affects uh, how the spending power of every given individual. Uh, safe to say, this year there was no increment in the minimum wage. It's still the same that was there in 2022. So definitely, everyone was anticipating this year at least there will have been a revised on the, on the minimum wage. However, you can see it affects in, uh, the, the point of how each and every individual is able to uh, afford the basic needs afford basic health care. So definitely if minimum wage is reviewed in a way that supports the current economic needs, then it really goes a long way in supporting a, a given uh, individual. Uh, and this is a discussion that we are having. Because um, I'm trying to figure out, uh, I could say a friend, I think a, a friend actually went and he got an opportunity outside this country. Sure. And you know, he was giving us feedback the way rent is, is 250000 for, uh, you know, a one-bedroom house. And everyone was like, no, that can't be. And now the discussion was, okay, if you're paying rent, 250000 equivalent of Kenya shillings, uh, then it means the minimum wage in that particular country is slightly higher, which can be able to cater for that. Mm -hmm. But now question is in the Kenyan context. Um, I know, I know Koto has been at the center stage of everything. Who, who, who pays attention how much a house help is paid in the house? How are you able to follow up to see that this issue of minimum wage is adhered to, especially from a policy perspective as somebody who works, uh, you know, uh, in the corporate world? Definitely tracking on, uh, on uh, how much everyone is earning is going to, it's quite a difficult task. However, I think it's, it's, it's very prudent for us to take initiative in a way that we're able still to follow what the guidelines are. And you'll see that most uh, employers or most uh, people uh, kind of look at uh, uh, sectors that have been unionized in a way that they're able at least to to have that control in terms of the minimum wage because at the end of the day you're not able to track and keep uh, track of how much everyone is being paid but you need to ensure that at least everyone is within that falls within that kind of uh, bracket for the minimum wage definitely yeah. and uh, i mean our economy is 80 percent i know they call it informal but uh, I, I don't think that should be the term uh just falls and uh, you know micro, small, and medium-sized enterprise. That's what you know, controls our economy. And it is not reg regulated, per se. 
is is there room for for intervention and what will that do for this large sector of the economy definitely there's room for intervention and uh, basically around the minimum uh, or around the cost of living uh, the back actually stops with the, our, our legislations that uh, we, we currently have. If uh, our legislators or the legislation are able to, to work with stakeholders mm -hmm. to come up with ways that they're able to implement such kind of uh, initiatives, then uh, they'll have conversations around industry-specific kind of uh, targets mm -hmm. where, for example, you've, you've mentioned the SME sector, definitely they're able to inter consult with relevant as, uh, stakeholders in those uh, st sectors, they're able to come and uh, identify areas that they're able to work on and mm -hmm. attaining this kind of minimum wage policy that we are trying to bring in. Okay. Yeah. Ah, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting because now you saw the employers were talking just the other day, yeah. uh, Federation of Kenyan Employers, mm -hmm. and they're talking about all this loss of jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, when you look at the unemployment rate in the country, mm -hmm. I mean, we are, we are a relatively very young country and young continent. I think median age is 19 years, True. there about. Um, and and there, is, there seems to be an issue, even, even with wages amongst employers since the economy is depleted. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you find that, that fine balance between, I'm trying to keep the business afloat, but also, I make sure that the people who are running this business uh, are not sent home, one, um, or are not, you know, getting the basics uh, as much as our wages is concerned. Creating a fine balance between the two, as uh, we, we know, running, right now the cost of running a business is, uh, at least, I think it has actually even probably doubled from what from. <laughs> Uh, based on the uh, the necessities that are required to run a business, so as an organisation, you need to be very innovative of ways that you're able to to cushion you as an organisation and also cushion uh, your resources, which is the workforce, in a way that each each party wins. So there there are very uh, various uh, uh, frameworks that you can come up with. You can have the remote kind of work uh, formula where everyone uh, is able to to work remotely. You can uh, structure around uh, the benefits and the remuneration bit to see a way that uh, you're, you're still retaining your people, but you've restructured your wage structure in a way that it's able to be still uh, in in line with whatever the people have. And then, so you can also come up with um, incentives around now uh, trying to focus on uh, uh, spreading around the, the roles that are within the organization. If somebody was was able to double up in different roles, then it means that they will now to also work in hand to ensure that the still roles are being executed rather than now doing away with a whole department or doing away with a whole kind of position. So there are very ways that an organization can be very innovative in a way that they can cushion both their business and also cushion the, the organization itself and the people. That's interesting. I, I'm, I'm glad you've mentioned the issue of a flexible working environment. And, uh, you know, these days people are having, uh, initially hybrid was uh, top notch post COVID mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and people are being some days in the office, some days at home. And we've been seeing there is sort of a call, mm -hmm. uh, especially from market leaders such as you guys, workforce and, uh, you know, managers, CEOs are asking people to come back to the office. And there's that element of, uh, I think, productivity mm -hmm. uh, that, that's been an issue for, for some of the organization. Uh, I mean, this, this future of work that we were envisioning, where we'll be very flexible and working from wherever we work from, um, how, how is it materializing and what are the bumps that we are seeing on that journey? Yeah, the future of work is, is still the kind of remote work. It's something that we can never run away from. And uh, for most organizations, it's been able to work. Some are, some are, it's, 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 it's still a, a, a work in progress for most organizations, even in our country or in our continent in general. So definitely, the key for every organization is productivity. 
once business as or uh, the organizational uh, leadership are able to determine how do I measure productivity in a given organization or in a given team, then they're able to come up with policies around that support the kind of uh, remote work that you're trying to, to push for. And then you're also able to understand that I don't necessarily need a person A, B, and C to be in the office every day for them to be productive. As long as we have a, a structured framework in measuring productivity, then it's very much easier for me as an organization to be able to track performance, to track productivity, and also at the end of the day, uh, uh, so-and-so is able to work remotely and able to deliver on their, on their targets. Oh, yeah. That's incredible. I, I think with the, with the remote work um, conversation, Africa, in, in a way, in some quarters, especially in the tech spaces, mm -hmm. have been able to, to gain. And we are seeing globally, there is an element of outsourcing that we are seeing coming into the country. Now, on average, even when you use um, a different jurisdictions, uh, minimum wage standards, you find that the equivalent uh, on the Kenyan side, if you're being outsourced working remotely, you tend to, to make a decent amount. Uh, from, from your experience, how, how do we align sort of fine-tune the policies where now it is jurisdiction interacting with another jurisdiction and workers, Kenyans, are here in the middle. Has that been an issue or is it very seamless as it stands? Currently, I wouldn't say it's uh, an issue or it's seamless. Like we mentioned, uh, uh, the concept of uh, remote work is something that uh, just came into the market. Mm -hmm. So definitely uh, it's being implemented in phases. And you'll find, uh, like you've mentioned, the tech space. The tech space is one of the markets that has, has broadened in the past uh, two or three years, given the growth in the demand for the talent. So you'll find that organizations that are, are uh, not necessarily based in Kenya are looking for talent within our jurisdiction. And with that, uh, the only thing that is maybe a, a hindrance is now based on, on which uh, kind of jurisdiction they're going to base their work on. But if it's an organization that is willing to probably conform to the regulations in, in the country, they have various uh, supports that they can able to implement, especially around the employment record services, which is able to, to, to seamlessly um, allow them to, to have uh, talent from Kenya while still operating uh, from a different kind of jurisdiction. So. At the moment, I'd say it's not really seamless, but it's still a work in progress. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 of course, some people will argue, uh, is there room for abuse slightly? Like the way, the way we see or exploitation, quote unquote, because mm -hmm. I mean, it's the forces of demand and supply. That's why everyone is going to China to manufacture their things mm -hmm. because, I mean, the cost of production there, uh, it's relatively low. And when it comes now to the workforce and this arrangement that we're seeing globally, mm -hmm. it seems Africa is where you get uh, sort of uh, very affordable uh, labor work, even, even in the tech space and different spaces, uh, as we see. Uh, do you think we'll come to a time where, for example, a developer, yeah, uh, or are we already in that space where a Kenyan developer working here for a UK company will be paid best on the rates in the UK and not some side dealings? Yeah, for, for sure. Uh, I'd say uh, Africa is a hub of talent mm -hmm. based on our experience in, in this market. We've been able to, to see the growth, especially in the tech space, like you mentioned, the developers and the likes. So. Uh, they, they would, ideally you'll find that um, most, even our current, our own organizations within our Kenyan market, you'll find them that they are trying as much as possible to match up what the other countries are doing in terms of offering developers. Because at the end of the day, if I'm an organization and I'm not able to retain my, my, my team because of uh, benefits and remuneration, then mm. I have to find a balance in ensuring do I retain my best talent? Because at the end of the day, everyone will be shipping out from my organization going to for better uh, for better pay outside so if organizations are actually trying to to match up and to level with the market practices which is a very good trend currently in the kenyan market all right yeah. and as we finish up arnold i know we've spoken at length different spaces uh bottom line um you have said some of the interventions are very critical yeah, I know you've mentioned in-house arrangements within organizations. Uh, at some 
point you noted the issue of legislation mm -hmm. i mean moving forward because that is also i i feel one of the biggest loopholes that we have in the country sometimes things just pass through uh parliament without really a critical uh, you know thought being put into it uh, what is the call to action for our legislators even as they plan to go for their holiday so that when they come back in 2024 they can look at this issue of cost of living for Kenyan workers? I'd say f for on my end is just to ensure that uh, the legislator or the, the people who may be policy makers we call them they're able to come up with the uh, regular reviews of the minimum wage uh, which is uh, commensurate to to the current econ economic status given that um uh, as i understand that uh, we have one review per year but given the circumstances around the change in the economic status then it's prudent they're able to to come up with the policies that are able to review it as per the the, the cost of living that is the current in the current space and the current market all right yeah thank you very much Anna. Thank you very much. All right. What a conversation. Arnold Cheng is the general manager of Workforce Africa. You're talking about work, minimum wage, and um, the way some of these issues intermarry, uh, you know, remote working spaces vis-a-vis -vis how they're paid and how we, you know, streamline the whole sector. So we take a short break while here on business today. When we come back, we'll be talking matters to do with uh, e-commerce and how that space is changing for the better state yet. Santa Zanaman.